Perhaps you've noticed by now that the gases unit is a lot about uh, solving problems that are based on formulas. That tends to happen a lot, particularly in the second semester of a chemistry course. So let's just jump in and solve some problems. Let's, let's solve some problems. You definitely will need a calculator for these. Okay, let's do problem number one. These are all deal with Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's formula. I believe it goes Boyle's, Charles, Gay-Lussac. There it is. You got a 0.4 liter engine. Oh, that's a small engine. It's under a little bit of pressure, two atmospheres, and it increases to 20 atmospheres when the spark plug fires. What's the volume in the cylinder at that pressure? One good way to solve these is anytime you have some data, you could write it all down as a list if you wanted to, but it's a little bit faster to just throw it in right where it is. That's the original volume. Two atmospheres is your original pressure. Here's your final pressure. They want to know the final volume. We'll call that X. That means this is Boyle's Law, V's and P's. Plug into the formula, or just think about it in your head. That pressure went up by a factor of 10. The volume must go down by a factor of 10. I'll bet you the answer is 0.04 liters. And you can solve it mathematically. 2 atmospheres times 0.4 liters must be equal to 20 atmospheres times something else. I guess a much lower number, 10 times lower. X equals 0 0.4 liters, and there's your answer. It's always a good idea to try to do these in your head, at least to estimate. Okay, problem number two. A two-liter balloon is heated until the gas inside warms from 25 to 323 degrees Celsius. What's the final volume of the balloon? I do not like Celsius for these problems. Be sure to change it to Kelvin. And here we go. Two liters must be your original volume. Your initial temperature is 298 Kelvin. Notice 273 was added to make it, uh, to make it that amount. And... The final volume, no, the final temperature is 323. Let's add 273 to that to get 596K. We got some original and final temperature and original volume. We can now solve for that final volume because T1 over V1 equals T2 over V2. Or estimate it, just do it in your head, temperature is proportional to volume. Notice 298 to 596, somebody made this easy. That's doubling the temperature. It's not like seven, uh, six and a half times like it looks here. It always changes when you change it to Kelvin. So the real mag magnitude of the temperature difference in any event, T1 over V2, T1 over V1 equal T2 over V2. It's going to double simply from two to four. And when you plug in those numbers, cross multiply to solve it at that point, and there it is, and you get four liters. Third problem, gay with sex. You got a fixed volume of aluminum can with air in it that can handle a pressure of four atmospheres. That's our original pressure. It's in a two liter can, but if you could follow this through, you'll find that this thing is at a fixed, what I think it says so, fixed volume. So who cares what that volume is? Okay, and the original pressure was 1.2. It went up to four, and it was 25 degrees. Change it to Kelvin. And we have enough to do a T1 over P1 equals T2 over P2 problem. I guess T2 equals... No, T2 is known. The thing that is not known is the final... I don't know what the heck is going on here. Ah, looks like the pressure is... Oh, I see. It can handle 4 atmospheric pressure. We're going to solve for P2 and see if it's higher or lower than 4. So let's go ahead and do that. T1 over P1 equals T2 over P2. Our little estimate shows that the temperature really isn't going up much, 20% maybe. So it's only going to go from 1.2 to, I don't know, 1.5 atmospheres or not. I can already just give you the answer. It's no, but solve it mathematically and cross multiply and you get one and a half atmospheres, well below its bursting point. Don't forget to answer the question. Will it burst? No. This is Screencast 10.4.